Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to another video. Uh, so let's start off today with a little bit of a chat and uh, that is regarding this lockdown period. So I don't actually know what's going to happen with this lockdown. Uh, like all of you know, it's like the current, uh, it's currently the COVID-19 lockdown here in South Africa and up to this point we don't know when it's going to end. So we are restricted to go out of our properties um, unless we want to do something like go buy food. Now that is a bit of a problem for me making our uh, um, adventurous epic videos, you know. So uh, I thought it'd be best for this time um, that we are stuck at home. Let's uh, let's make sure that we master our uh, DaVinci Resolve editing skills. And uh, we are starting out today with our project settings in DaVinci Resolve. Now just for a quick disclaimer, um, I've been using DaVinci Resolve for quite a while now, let's say two years, but I would no, at no means call myself uh, a professional editor. So uh, the whole idea of this series is going to be uh, for basic setups. So uh, what we aim to do is become proficient at this DaVinci Resolve to reach a point where we can actually just, uh, you know, like fluently produce videos and it needs to be exciting, you know. So we could, we'll be a bit covering a bit of fusion, we'll be covering important export qualities, We'll be covering transitions, how to add in videos, making templates, making transitions, making titles, you know, all of those fun stuff, the essentials of what you need. We are at no means gonna end up with the quality, well, we would like to, but uh, it's it's gonna be too short of a period to end up with the quality where we can actually produce uh, like movies. So, <laughs> I mean, if we get to the color grading side of stuff, which we will, which we will touch, but uh, it's it can, it can get lengthy, so. Uh, Without any further ado, let's jump straight into your project manager settings, uh, which is the short part we will discuss today. Okay, so uh, after we've created a new project, uh, titled our project new set, uh, project settings, um, what we do want to do before we drag in our footage is edit the timeline settings. And how you edit that is you go to the right bottom of DaVinci Resolve, you'll see the spanner, wheel spanner settings, uh, project settings button. Click on it and we'll open your project settings. Uh, we will only be discussing the master settings today and also only the critical part, which is your timeline format. And uh, the rest is, is uh, not really applicable to us now because let's say for instance, video monitoring, that will only be applicable when you have an additional monitor set up uh, for specifically showing, you know, full screen, uh, the video output that uh, you are busy editing. So seeing that we don't have a monitor, we're basically just editing on our PC, video monitoring settings can be uh, neglected at this point. So we are just gonna focus on our time uh, timeline uh, format. And uh, what you need to know here is, I think I would recommend, first of all, opening your footage. Simply right click on it and go properties, go additional details, and then you will find all the details of the footage. What I would also recommend is go look up the camera you used or the device you used to do your recordings and go see what is the codec used for that camera. Uh, like the bit rate, the, the reading rate, the, is it 8 bit or 10 bit colors, what is the pixel aspect ratio, everything we will be using in the input right now. Let's say for instance I've recorded my footage in 4K. What's important to, know, to remember is uh, that's not necessarily what you need to put in your timeline, uh, timeline format. Um, you can, for instance, do it in Full HD and then still render out in 4K footage. Uh, so this is only what you're going to see in your timeline while editing. Now, I would recommend if, you can, if your PC can handle it, to uh, go up to the highest resolution that you recorded at, which is, in my case, a 1920 by 1080. And then we will edit it from there. Um, so my PC can handle it, but in this case, I'm going to leave it there. What this additional uh, processing size is, uh, you can go custom and enter custom sizes here. If you want to have, for instance, a square aspect ratio of 800 by 800 or one by one. Uh, but for my case, I'm just gonna leave it at uh, 1920 by 1080 HD. Now then we go on to your uh, pixel aspect ratio. What is this? Uh, now this is different than your video aspect ratio. I guess I'm gonna try and explain this the best to my uh, abilities. So, what, I, what we need to remember is that a video consists of, uh, let's say, 24 frames per second, which means there's 24 frames in a second. That basically matches our eye that sees about 24 images each second, meaning that each, each frame is a uh, picture, basically. So each picture is made out of um, thousands and thousands of pixels. Now, each pixel represents a color. 
Okay, so that's where we get, for instance, the RBG colors. So you have an LED light that's so small on your, on your computer monitor that is basically either shining red, green, or um, yellow. What is it? Red, green, no? Red, green, or blue, I guess. Um, RGB, I mean, come on, no? red, green, blue. <laughs> okay, so red, green, and blue. So if you put all of these LEDs on uh, together, it, it starts making up an image. So a lot of colored pixels equals a colored image eventually. So the pixel aspect ratio refers to the ratio of that specific pixel. So I'm going to put up an uh, example image now on the screen. And I'm going to show you that this, if this was shot in a square pixel, pixel aspect ratio, and you tell it was shot in 19 by 6 aspect ratio, pixel aspect ratio, then when you take your footage into uh, the program, it's going to render it out as being squeezed or, uh, or vice versa as stretched. So um, hopefully that explains everything. So basically what it means is my camera shots in a square aspect a pixel aspect ratio, which means my pixels is one by one ratio. Um, if it was different, it should have been, let's say for instance, 16 by nine. Um, then you would change it if you want to view it on, on, on the monitor that's let's say for instance one, one to one aspect with pixel aspect ratio. Okay, so that's it for pixel aspect ratios. Now that we know what it is, um, it's important to know what your camera, sh camera shoots at. Uh, most likely your camera is also going to shoot at square pixel aspect ratios, so tick square uh, pixel aspect ratios and let's continue. Okay, so next up is our timeline frame rate. Now you need to remember that everything of this timeline format is strictly for the timeline. It's not going to change your footage. Um, okay, so what you, what's important to remember about the timeline frame rate and this whole timeline format section is that once you've edited and once you've imported your footage, you won't be able to change this again. So make sure that everything is right. So at this point, you want to go check out what frame rate was your footage shot at. This specific footage was, was shot at 59.94 frames per second. Now I've shot it at a higher frame rate in order to slow it down. But what I want to do for my timeline and my export is going to be 24 frames per second. I would recommend that you change your timeline settings to be the same as your uh, intended export settings. So keep that in mind while changing this. So we are going to go ahead and change it to 24 frames per second. And the same goes for our playback frame rate. Okay, so now here in the, the grayed out area, you'll see an option called use drop frame time code. So now what is this? So basically what you have is my camera has also the option to shoot at not 24 frames per second, but 23.976 frames per second. So when you use the drop frame settings and you sh shot, let's say for instance, an hour of footage. So your timeline is in 24 frames per second, but your footage is in, is in 23.976 frames per second. So uh, over an hour, that, that uh, extra frame that it cuts out is actually gonna make the footage a bit slower. So when you use the drop frames uh, per second option, if you tick it, um, it's, when, it, when you render it out, that hour footage, instead of being a bit longer, is going to be exactly an hour long. So that means your how many thousand frames ever is going to end up at exactly one hour. Okay guys, so for the last point, we have this checkbox which uh, is enable video uh, field processing. Now, uh, this is only important if you work with interlaced media. Now, if you don't know what interlaced media is, don't worry, just leave the button. If you're curious about what it is, I'm gonna try and explain it myself. There's a video that I've uh, linked in the description below that describes it quite properly. So uh, if you're interested, go look at that. But if you're uh, not and you don't work with interlaced media, don't worry, just leave it unticked. Okay, so that covers the basic of everything we need to know for our import settings. So next time we will talk about everything about our export settings, as well as I've got an additional program that I like to use called Handbrake. So that's it for today, guys. I hope you found this content informative. Uh, let me know what you think, or if you have any uh, additional uh, comments on this, maybe you can help us out with this. Um, I, like I said, I don't know everything about it. I'm at no means a professional at this. We are basically focusing on, uh, on a need to know basis, what we need to know, to make our uh, YouTube videos. So uh, thanks for watching guys, and we will see you in the next episode. Cheers.